Today we are talking about why AI drones will never replace drone pilot. Okay, maybe we should talk about this. As a professional drone pilot in the industry, I think it's important to keep tabs on this kind of technology in defense of our work. And when I'm flying, I can't necessarily film myself doing other things. So I'm really curious to see how these drones perform not only as drones with aerial capabilities, but as a potential second cameraman who can follow you around. Now, full disclosure, I was sent both of these drones by Zero Zero Robotics, but I am going forward with full creative control on this project, and I'm going to give you my honest thoughts on each of them. If anything, you might want to stick through this video for the entertainment value. It gets chaotic testing these two, and you'll see what I mean in a second. <laughs> Diving into the similarities of both these drones. Both are self-flying AI powered with multiple flight modes built in, no controller necessary. You literally just put the drone on your hand. And this is on hover, oh, hello. This is on hover mode. <laughs> it's filming me right now, so I could also just show you that. But there's my setup, there's the drone. It's following me as I move. You put your hand out, catch the drone, call it a day, easy. Both these drones are protected by this special plastic, which is very bendable and very durable. Both are equipped with a gimbaled camera, which is designed to keep the footage stable in real time. And I think that's where the similarities end. The X1, when you fold it up, is five inches by 3.5 inches by 1.25 inches. For literally the rest of the world, that means it's 12.5 by 8.5 by three centimeters folded up. Here is the drone in comparison to my iPhone 15 Pro Max. For the Hover X1 Pro Max, it is 5.75 by 4 by 1.5 inches. Not American friends, that is 14.5 by 10.5 by 4 centimeters folded. Hover Air X1 is equipped with a half inch sensor that records up to 2.7K 30 FPS. Or if you want a higher frame rate than 1080p at 60 frames per second. The X1 Pro Max is equipped with a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor. This is the same size as the Osmo Action 5, DJI 04 Air Units, and also the Avada 2. This thing shoots at 8K 30 frames per second. And if you wanted to shoot in slow-mo, this thing shoots at 4K 120 frames per second. The Hover Air X1 boasts up to 11 minutes of flight time, while the X1 Pro Max boasts up to 16 minutes of flight time. The X1 advertises up to 15 miles per hour tracking, while the X1 Pro Max advertises up to 37 miles per hour tracking. Both drones are equipped with bottom and front facing obstacle avoidance sensors, but the X1 Pro Max in particular has an additional backwards facing sensor. So when it's tracking you from the back, it has one extra sensor to avoid it from just smashing into whatever is behind it. Both drones can be controlled by themselves without a phone or with the app included. It's just that the X1's interface is just a button with five lights that indicate different modes you can fly from. And then the Pro Max is equipped with a screen, an OLED screen that you can actually toggle through modes with them. This thing is really loud. <laughs> so I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure the X1 only has auto camera capabilities for it. You can't really toggle settings and learn camera settings to make it look better. It is what it is. The thing that I really like about the Pro Max is that there is manual camera control settings in this. I can adjust my shutter angle. I can also adjust my ISO. There is an extra accessory that changes the game for this drone in my opinion, and I'll share what that is later in the video. You can control both drones from your phone manually using the Hover Air app and the screen as little gimbals, but the X1 also offers a new accessory, which is the beacon with joysticks, where you can have a physical remote to control the drone for a further range. The X1 boasts seven different flight modes you can fly, while the Hover Air X1 Pro Max boasts 10, with the newest modes including cycling mode, skiing mode, and indoor follow mode. Now through this specs list, it might seem like a pretty obvious choice, which is better, but I think the factor to really tip the scales is price. The Hover Air X1 starts at $349, while the X1 Pro Max currently starts at $699. So it's essentially double the price. 
Now we've gone through the list of specs. Let's go ahead and take this into the real world. Now the first time I flew both drones was in the same location, which was my house, just to play around to see how it felt. And out of the box, to be honest, the Pro Max didn't look that different to me from what the X1 was generating with its camera. But the big difference came when I started getting crazier with it. I went up to the rooftop and I filmed with the Pro Max using its orbit mode. And there's this shot I really like, which is orbiting with a larger focal length. This thing looks crazy because you get beautiful parallax. And I saw that the Pro Max had a 2x zoom mode. So I tried it out. And to be honest, doesn't look bad at all. Doesn't keep me 100% centered like a professional drone pilot might do. But for something that you can just carry in your pocket, not bad at all. The second test I did did not have the X1 included because I was on a job, but I'll include the footage anyway. I was essentially shooting a store grand opening with my drone and camera, and I brought this along because it fit. And I decided to test it out when the store was less crowded. I set it to track myself and my friend from outside of the store to inside of the store and to see how well it would follow me. It tracked me pretty much flawlessly in follow mode as I was walking from outside to inside the store. And then I tried out dolly mode where it followed me from the front for a more unique perspective where you can see my face and the actions I was taking in the shoe aisles. And honestly, I was pretty impressed with the result. It looks like someone with a gimbal following me backwards. If you're moving at a consistent pace, the X1 Pro Max seems to do a pretty good job of keeping a similar distance. But as your speed and direction changes, it can freak out a little bit. <laughs> now this next test I did was the first time I put both drones head to head in the same environment and conditions. I went to the beach and I filmed with both drones in the air. Honestly, probably not the best place to try this test for the first time because the worst case scenario, they crash into each other, they fall into the sand and the water. And those are both things you do not want to get into your drones. <laughs> but impressively enough, they did a great job of avoiding each other and making quite a spectacle. I've never had two drones follow me at the same time. That was pretty fun. I know my fellow creator and friend Aldrin Flight Path put up three drones in the air while he was on his bike. So that gave me the confidence to try this test on the beach. So one thing to note is on this test, I did not film in 8K on the Pro Max. Instead, I used its 4K HDR capability. So instead of giving me extra resolution to crop into because YouTube videos aren't even really 8K right now, they're 4K. So I didn't really need that extra resolution. I opted for higher dynamic range so I could get more data from exposure and colors so I could bring it into post and see what I could do with color and grading. You can see side by side, both images honestly look pretty dang good. I will say though, if you look closer up at the X1 footage, you'll see that the shadows and the blacks of my outfits are actually getting lost. The X1 Pro Max performed really well. The shadows from my outfit are distinct. The highlights of the sky are kept well. So when I apply a grade to this footage, it looks awesome. Everything is just preserved. So camera wise, very impressed with the X1 Pro Max in this situation. Flight wise, they both did pretty good. They did what I wanted them to do, which was follow me down the beach as I walked and as I ran. They both did a great job. I did notice a couple jitters from the X1, probably from the lower level gimbal that it's got attached to it. But overall for like 80% to 90% of the run, they both did great in this situation. And just to test the AK capabilities, I did take the X1 Pro Max up during sunsets and flew it with manual control on the phone. I will say the manual control feels like it's gotten better on the phone on the X1 Pro Max versus the X1. The controls feel a little bit jittery. You can't go as dialed in as you would with a real controller. So I do feel like unless you have the beacon, which I didn't get because I heard that there are still some kinks being worked out on it. This drone excels when you can program it to fly at its best on its own. But overall, dude, 8K data looks great. I'll do some test punching in from 8K to 4K right now so you can see how much resolution and detail is actually preserved within that 8K. Because in my opinion, that's what matters the most. You still there? Because this is the part where it gets really fun. For our fourth test, I hit up one of my good friends and mentors, Ali. He owns a pedicab and bike production company, and he's been developing this e-bike called the Zion Bike. It looks friggin' sick. But I really wanted to put these follow joints to the test to see if they could keep up with us on these e-bikes. We chose this field because it's a great test to see what the speed and follow capabilities of the X1 and Pro Max are, 
while going through multiple different kinds of terrain. We sent both drones up at the same time to try to get literal side-by-side -side results for you guys to compare. So the main things that stuck out to me in this test were one, a e-bike and a self-following drone match made in heaven. Man, it was so much fun. Secondary, both drones did a decent job of following, but once the e-bikes hit past 15 miles per hour, this thing was dusted. This thing would just get lost somewhere in the trail or behind where we were. Thankfully, it hovers in place until you find it or it runs out of battery. This is the part that actually really impressed me because Ali went for a seven minute ride along different terrains, different speeds, and the Pro One Max kept up entirely and did a great job of filming him. Look at him, he looks like a GTA character. <laughs> That's definitely the look that this drone gives when it's following you from behind. After Ali went for a spin, I decided to jump on the e-bike and give it some more follow tests. I mentioned earlier in the video that there is a game changer for this particular X1 Pro Max, and this is it right here, the Hover Air X1 Pro Max ND filters. If you don't know what an ND filter is, let me show you, baby. NDs honestly feel like the craziest cheat code. They're one of the simplest, yet most effective ways to make your footage look higher quality and more cinematic. Essentially what they are, are just some small pieces of glass for your camera lens. You just kind of click it on like that, boom, and it's on there. So the reason why this is important is because when you're filming with any lens and there is no neutral density applied to it, you are getting the full burst of light into this lens. And in order to compensate for this brightness, your camera is automatically spiking up the shutter speed. So what that looks like in the final video is a pretty sharp image and there's no motion blur. There is this rule called the 180 degree shutter angle rule, which is where you double the frame rate that you're shooting at, and that typically yields a really nice result for your pictures. This is what most movies shoot in when they're filming standardly. And when you get that motion blur in your footage, especially for something as high speed as drone chase footage, everything just looks faster. And I use this for all of my FPV and drones to make my footage look. So after we did the tests in cycling and follow mode, I put the drones into my personal favorite mode that both these drones do offer, which is dolly track mode. And the cool thing about this mode is as opposed to just following you from the back so you can't really tell who the person is, you set this one in front of you. And once you set it, it basically stays on a track to try to track you facing the same direction. So if I started from the front and I start moving forward, this drone is going to track me moving backwards and capture me from the front and the sides. This is the mode that really wins me in a real life use where I don't just want a GTA perspective. I think that's kind of funny, but I'd love to have a perspective that actually shows me as a character. So we sent them both up at the same time to see how their dolly modes would compare. <laughs> this was probably the funniest part of the tests I've done. I was sending it, man. I was going across that field, probably hitting about 20 to 30 miles per hour sometimes. And at the very beginning when I was taking it easier, the X1 and the Pro Max both held up and they both did a great job of tracking me. But eventually the X1 got confused. It might have been because the X1 Pro Max flew in front of it slightly, but it lost me. While the X1 Pro Max kept following me. And the way it followed me is just hilarious because it's like this thing has a mind of its own. It's doing its best to keep me centered, whether it's from the side or the front. And it was getting really creative with the way it was capturing me. Granted, it got crazy close sometimes. <laughs> but I knew that even if it contacted me, it wouldn't hurt me. And to be honest, I was pleasantly surprised with these results. I will say, getting this angle of shots where you're flying backwards or from the side, this can be difficult to do even with FPV and regular drones because as a manned pilot, it's hard to fly backwards unless you're in the right position. The only way you could really get shots like this safely and confidently manned is if you had a dual operator on something like an Inspire 3 or the rumored Mavic 4, which has a pilot flying facing the direction that they're going and having a camera operator facing away. So at least someone knows what direction the drone is going. These guys on the other hand, they don't give a second shit about their life. They will send themselves into death in order to get you a shot that they think is good. <laughs> and I think that's one of the really cool things about this drone is you don't really have much to lose as long as you're in a controlled environment, you're not gonna hurt anybody. These drones will send themselves to their grave to get you some good stuff. After that, we did some comparisons between the X1 and the Pro Max, but this time we wanted to use 
the Pro Max's slow motion mode. Filming at 4K 120 frames per second, we did some tests from orbits and we did some tests with top down shots. And honestly, with these shots with the Zion bike kicking up dirt and having it centered in that circle, I really, really enjoyed this shot. This is probably one of my favorite shots of all the tests that I ran. All right, so closing thoughts after testing out both of these drones. Are drone pilots safe from AI? For now, this thing will not replace a competent drone pilot. It does have follow features that would typically be more difficult for even seasoned pilots to pull off, such as the dolly track mode. However, in terms of precision, in terms of where you want the drone to be exactly and when, this thing is not going to get you there. In my opinion, this is not a tool to buy as your first drone in order to go up the ranks and improve your drone operation skills. This is something that you buy when you want an exciting new angle that you don't have to worry about having a second person man it. You can have this on your own and still get some really exciting shots. Will it work in any situation? Not yet. But with the advancement of Hover Air going between these two drones in one year, concerning stuff, I will say, because only Lord knows how much better these things will be in the next three to five years. Now, suggestion updates for future firmwares and models of this line. Obviously, improving the tracking and the obstacle avoidance is huge. There is a pretty cool function when you're connected to the app where it's recording your audio from the phone and syncing it with the video. It's still pretty buggy and there's usually a few frames of lag. So the more that this can be improved, the better. The craft of drones in general is still something that's evolving. AI is known for taking what we know already and improving upon it and making it faster. But when it comes to original concepts, that's something that humans still have to make. And so as a creative, as a drone pilot, it's up to us to keep pushing the bar. And honestly, the gap between what a human pilot can do and what an AI powered drone can do will probably shrink. But ultimately it will always be creatives who will be pushing the bar forward. For the X1, I'd recommend this to more casual users, someone who is just looking for a nice angle or aerial picture view that's easy and simple enough to use and safe enough to get memories, capture them on your phone and have them to preserve. It does start to show when you blow it up, even in crop vertical for your social media or shorts, that this is a camera that will probably match the quality of your iPhone, if not be a little bit worse. I've had this X1 for a while now and I've done tests on it, I've shot footage on it, but every time I think about bringing it on a trip where I wanna get the best content possible, it doesn't really fall into the category of me bringing it just yet. Footage from the X1 is most likely not going to keep up with that of my drones and my Sony. So that is why it's extremely interesting to me now, after testing this X1 Pro Max, that it's actually producing some quality images that I thought was only previously capable with more professional level equipment. And for that to be something that can fit into my bag and really not be that much of a bother, this thing is like less than 200 grams. It's a very strong argument, especially now that it shoots 4K HDR, 8K, and is ND filter compatible while being manual camera control. To be honest, you might be seeing a lot more of these angles in more of my content. And that should speak for itself. So if you are a content creator that cares about improving your camera image, and you are looking to add a fresh perspective and angles to your videos, this might be worth looking into. Overall, in the quality to function to price ratio, this thing is standing out to me as a pretty solid contender. And it's something I think I just might be adding to my gear bag for my future travels. I'm actually gonna do that tonight. I'm going on a trip and I will bring this with me to get more tests. Overall, not going to replace my FPV drones, but a really cool extra tool to have for a very small weight to price to quality cost. Leave your questions about the X1 and the X1 Pro Max down below. Thank you for watching. This has been Kai and I will see you real soon. Peace.